check check peace peace how y'all doing it's your boy free play we're back with another video uh today we're gonna be going over how to make industry type beats uh, i know it's not a type beat channel but i'm gonna show you how i use my samplers in conjunction with ableton to make like your standard type beat where it's like something a rapper would want to get on and um i'm also i also wanted to address a comment that was posted and like shortly after erased by a commenter i don't think he's a subscriber but he was mentioning how when he sees a computer uh, or anybody using a computer or treating this like an office job or work that he automatically turns off the screen um is the internet so you're free to do whatever you want. You don't have to come to my channel. I'm grateful to everybody that has subscribed, anybody that's checking in and is appreciative of the work that I'm doing. But um, I wanted to address something important, not, not to this person specifically, but about the channel, about the culture and the community in general. Um, so my channel description pretty much says it all. Um, this is a channel that I created just to express my journey, like how I approach production and how I think about things. And I do use a hybrid setup. It says it in my description, right? So I use my, my MPC, my ASR, and I use DAWs. And I use almost every DAW besides, you know, a few of them. But I have used almost every DAW. Um, mainly I use Ableton when I'm working with samplers and I'm going to talk about why today I actually and I use FL Studio sometimes and I use Pro Tools when I'm working as an engineer in recording studios. So the reason why I made like one of my first story time videos telling you guys about my awards and my credits was because I wanted you guys to know where I was coming from. Like I'm not a hobbyist. I'm not a beat maker. I'm not an influencer and I don't consider myself a content creator, even though that's what I'm doing here on YouTube. But I, I work in the industry as an audio engineer. Um, I express my art as a recording artist and a producer and music is my full time career. Right. So I'm not here to kind of like sell you anything or make the hottest beats. I just want to show you guys how I do things, what works for me and what the industry you know give you guys kind of like a peek behind the industry if you guys are interested in that you know what i mean from a real person that actually works in new york city in the music industry right so it's not here i'm not here to like do everything uh analog or without a doll or vinyl like realistically speaking none of my placements or anything that i've worked on has been with a vinyl record that i've sampled so i don't consider myself like oh i'm a hip-hop like producer that samples yeah i use samplers but i use them in a totally different way um and i kind of wanted to talk about that um like the reason why i like using samplers is because it gives me a unique sound like that's what i'm kind of trying to show you guys in this channel is that i'm in constant search for something that's unique that makes me stand out because now with the democratization of the tools that we have aka Anybody could get a laptop and FL Studio or Ableton and download the same loops as you guys go on Splice or go on any website, get these same loops and we're all going to sound the same, you know, because everybody likes the same kind of beats. Uh, eventually, you know, you want to compete, you want to be on certain playlists. So the reason why I use certain things is kind of like just to stand out, you know what I mean, with my production and because I enjoy the process, I thoroughly enjoy spending time on the mpc chopping up drum loops or even just seeing what happens like my last video i mean some people and even myself like i don't save some of these beats i just do it like i'm freestyling in the moment and i find like a function like when i was messing with the xylophone i didn't even save that as a patch like i, I turned off my asr at the end of the night and I, I was like, oh, like I found something in the LFO and then I'm going to use that later on when I'm creating something for my album, when I'm working with an artist that wants to lock in with me and really get the sound of like my unique approach of production. So I'm going to learn from that and apply it later. And that's what I'm hoping you guys are getting from it. You guys are seeing like, oh, I never went through that part in my if you have an ASR or EPS and or a 16 plus because they're all the same. 
So you're like, oh, wow, like I'm going to try that next time. And that's the point. It's not for you to like follow exactly what I do or even the way I approach things is for you guys to take something from it and also to, to give you guys advice. Because like I said it before, and I don't know if I did say it, but I'm saying it now. Nobody cares what you made your beat on. If you're trying to place a beat or if you're trying to sell it or even if you're putting it out yourself, nobody's going to care if you went to the record store, got it from the real drum break and nobody cares about that. So if that matters to you, that is going to make you sleep better at night to be a purist, then go ahead. But if you want to be an industry producer, that doesn't really matter and you can't like let's stop making the community about being a purist like hip-hop purism uh, or like sampling like boom bap versus trap like let's stop the divide because in reality if you're not adapting to technology and this might contradict what i said before because i don't want the new npcs or whatever but that's because it's a personal choice not because i'm against technology i stay up with everything that's coming out and I just choose not to get it because it doesn't fit my workflow. I'm not saying that we should not use it. Look at all the people that got some of the biggest records and are still producing to this day. And I'll mention some just because I've seen them directly use technology. Like there is a video on YouTube of Lord Finesse, DITC, digging in the crates, using Ableton. I use Ableton. So what, he, he's not using his SP-1200 at that moment? That doesn't make him hip-hop no more? You know what I mean? This guy produced some of the biggest records. We have uh, The Alchemist. He moved on from the ASR to the 2500. Oh, the 2500 is now one of the legacy NPCs. He's still making hits? So what does it matter? Like, hip-hop since the beginning has been about technology, has been about taking tools that weren't meant to do what they were intended to by the manufacturer and adapting it to the community to the hip-hop to the culture it's not about being a purist like oh if you don't use vinyl i'm not gonna be in your channel like checking you out because you're cheating or you're using loops like everybody uses loops kanye got producers that use loops and he put it out on the album like from you know frank duke's pack so what is the music good do you like it do you vibe with it or is like you can't sleep at night knowing that you didn't sample that from a vinyl record like come on you know what i mean uh, uh you know I, and i could keep going there's like a bunch of people even pete rock like i know he uses serato so he's probably getting like bpm matching through serato like use your tools because you want to slow things down all right that's cool but if you want to beat match something on Ableton because it's easier, that's what it's there for. It's there for you to make things easier, for you to be efficient. If you need this to be efficient, then go for it. If you need to check the key of a sample, stop trying to like waste your time. If you really need it fast, like go, they got tools online for that. That's AI, like use AI. I'm not anti technology because that's anti hip hop. So don't come in my comments, please, and talk about oh, you're not real, like, bro, I, I got a sampler like in 2012, so I missed the whole golden era of hip hop. I'm using this because I like to use it. And because, yes, yeah, some of my producers that I look up to used it and I wanna be in that mode. But I use this also to stand out. That's why I'm showing you guys things that I do, like mod my guitar, because now my Fender sounds different than somebody else's Fender. I'm not the best guitarist, but I want my shit to sound unique. So, you know what I mean? Like, if you guys are, are like just here for niche stuff or see me sample off of vinyl and do things like without cheating, like, no, this is about being efficient. I'm trying to show you guys how to use your tools, take whatever you will from it, and then apply it yourself. So, um, I'm gonna be rocking with Ableton today, and I got a bunch of samples that I just collect, people send to me, or I buy them sample packs things like that and i'm going to show you guys how you could put that into the asr and basically make a beat and make yourself stand out you know and that's the cool thing about having a sampler is that if somebody's using the same loop you might be able to make yourself stand out because the effects that your sampler has or whatever the case may be so i didn't mean to go off on a rant 
but I just felt like it's something that needed to be addressed, not because of that person, but because it's something that I see across the board, right? Like just producer shaming and things like that. And, and, and I don't want this to be about, you know, people putting other others down because they don't have a certain piece of equipment or because they approach music this, a, diff, a certain way. Right. So, you know, use your tools. That's what they, these are all tools. We've been blessed to have them and technology is only going to get better. But, you know, stem separation, that's great, man. Like, do I need it inside of my MPC? No, I paid for FL Studio. They just announced stem separation like in December. I also have Serato Studio, which is free. They got stem separation. So I don't care if I have to go around and do it. There's a video of, of Jake One using stem separation with a analog like piece of equipment like a vinyl you know like watch his videos too and he uses pro tools so jake one that, that's the last example i wanted to bring up a producer that uses pro tools he said i did the drums all in pro tools for this record because maybe he didn't have access to his asr and he was in a session or he just wanted to do things different so what he's not hip-hop anymore because he decided to use pro tools one day and do his drums come on man so i'm not even gonna entertain stuff like that moving forward but this channel is just getting started and i wanted to address that specifically um again industry professionals use technology we use all the tools and uh i just want to show you guys my process so you could take from it what you will uh again some of these beats i don't even save them they're just here for me to explore. And then I apply that to when 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 I um, go ahead and do something for a placement or do something for my own music. Um, and another thing about using vinyl is is the copyright strikes, right? Like, so I'm just getting started on this on this journey and certain copyright strikes could get your page flagged. And then later on, like you won't be eligible to either monetize the page or you could get banned for using a record that you don't have clearance to use. And that's something that even the music industry, right, like has moved away from. A lot of producers have moved away from using samples from vinyl because it's hard to clear samples. So they go and they use Kingsway, you know, they use Frank Dukes or they use a sample back, a sample pack from the drum broker or from another producer in Germany that's making dope ass vintage sounding samples. And that's how I approach this shit too. So I'm gonna use samples cause I don't want my stuff to get copyright strike. Both times that I've used samples on this page already, I've gotten a copyright strike on both of my videos that I use the vinyl. Um, so even when I did the rhythm roulette and when I did my creative process video, which was my second video, I got copyright strikes. So, you know, I got to use, uh, alternative so that I could keep showing you guys the things that I want to show you is going to be sounding like it's a soul sample, but guess what? Somebody did it maybe last year or five years ago, they created the same vibe. They probably went to a studio, use analog equipment. And that's the, that's the, what we're going for anyway. So you could apply these concepts and, you know, use them to your advantage. Hopefully they'll make you a better producer and hopefully they'll help you express your art better. And that's all I want to do as I want to inspire people to be able to express themselves a little bit better by seeing the way that I approach things. So that's it for the story talk. This is not a story talk video. I'm gonna get to the music. This is your boy Free Play. Thank y'all for rocking with me. One love, peace. So we're here at the ASR and we're gonna be starting from scratch. Um, as you can see, the sampler is completely empty. There's no instruments loaded or anything like that. And before we get started, I just wanna go over the signal flow that I have going on here. So my laptop is out of the frame, but it's right here above my SR to my left. And I'm going to be using this as my sample source. Like I explained in the intro, I'm going to be using like loops, packs, drums, everything that's in my, in my laptop. So the headphone output of my laptop is going into the right input of the record in of the ASR. And then I have um, a Shure SM58 mic connected to my vocal chain, the BAE 1073 and the Tube Tech. And the output of the compressor is going into the left side of my ASR. 
And the reason why I love this setup, and um, I think I might be able to do streaming, live streaming. If you guys are interested in that, um, let me know in the comments. Uh, I was waiting to get a bigger like mixer or a interface that had more inputs. But the cool thing about the ASR is that if you see these red buttons here that are lit up, these LEDs, whenever they're um, red like this and you make them red by clicking on them on A or B, you can monitor you can monitor the ASR, whatever's coming into the record inputs. And that's a unique feature of the ASR that, for example, the MPC 2000 Excel doesn't have. And I think this is one of the reasons why, um, and I don't know because I haven't asked him directly and I don't know the alchemist, but I think that's why he likes using the 2500 because you're able to play back your sequence and listen to what's coming into the ASR. And the reason why this is useful is because it's going to aid in the way that we're going to work today. So, for example, once I get a drum loop going um, or anything going, I could listen to what's coming in to my sampler before I even sample it. And in the MPC 2000 Excel, this is not a, an option. So you have to stop your sequencer, go into the sample window and it stops, you know, whatever drum loop you had going on. A way around this is if you have a mixer, you could have, you know, your MPC connected to the mixer and then on a separate input of the mixer, you can have, um, you know, your record player playing back or your samples playing back on a, on a separate input. But the ASR allows you to do this while you have everything connected to the ASR. So the ASR could kind of work as your mixer. You know, you have a two input mixer and that's how I'm using it today. So I have on the left, I have my mic and then on the right. I have my sample source, which in this case is is my laptop. Um, and if you have a DJ mixer, you could get a similar setup if you don't have ASR or you're working with a sampler that doesn't have a way to monitor the, the inputs. So anyways, um, I have my laptop coming in and then I have the headphone out of my ASR going to a separate computer that's running Ableton. Uh, Live 10. It's an old iMac running on an Apogee Duet Firewire interface. So I'm only using one of the inputs on the Duet right now because everything, like I said, is connected to the ASR and going over there. And that's how I'm tracking this. Um, I like this angle on the last video. So I'm going to use it because you could kind of see the, the, the LED over here. And, um, you know, the video is, is in, is on my iPhone 4k. So you should be able to read what I'm doing. I'm not going to explain everything. So this video might be a little bit more advanced, but it's for the concepts that you want to get out of this. You want to get the concepts and I'm going to be starting off with drums. Uh, I think that's a big advantage when you're making beats. Uh, again, this is like, let's say you're trying to avoid having beat block, which I don't believe is a thing. I think you just need to start creating. Um, beat block could be like just something personal that you're going through that's not allowing you to, you know, get into that creative mode. But if you make beats with this kind of thought process that I'm going to be showing you guys today, you could avoid beat block and make like a dope beat almost every single time. All right. And then as far as the techniques, some of, some of them I'm going to be explaining, but I'm not going to be um, going over too much of exactly how to do it. Um, I know there was another commenter. Yo, shout out to the commenters, man. Y'all get it. Y'all get it. Y'all getting to me. Y'all getting to me. Uh, not really, but but I'm gonna address it too. Like he was mad that I was talking over over a beat, but I, I did that because I wanted you guys to know what was going on in my head while I was doing that that stuff. And I think that's helpful. You know, I know you can't hear the beat sometimes, but at least you could know like, oh, that's what they think. You know, as a producer. But anyways, um, Metro Boomin, he talked about this. And the Alchemist talked about this, and he said he got that shit from Premiere, like I said in my creative process video. Start with the drums. If you start with the drums and get that locked in, you're going to be able to make a dope beat almost every single time. So I'm going to look for a drum loop and some drums, and I'm going to lock into a tempo. Um, I'm going to make sure that on my ASR here, I'm going to go to edit sequence. I'm going to set the tempo to like... Let's let's go with like 150, which is 75 BPM halftime, right? So let's go to 150. I like to work in this double time just because it'll put the snare on the three for me and it gives me more space. I feel to work when you're working in double time. Like, let's say I'm doing 150. The snare is always going to fall on the three 
of the four bar loop so you know one two snare and instead of like when you make uh 75 bpm or like 86 bpm you're gonna you're gonna be on the two and the four so it just makes it more static for me like when i use the lower tempos i don't know i like using more of this double time uh tempo so i'm gonna go through my my loops here and i could audition them and i'm gonna make sure that my ableton session is at 150 as well bpm so now the asr and ableton are both at, at 150 and that's the, the cool thing why i like using ableton when i'm making um like these boom bap type beats or or sampling not even boom bap forget about that when i'm sampling into external gear is because um they have great tempo matching so anything i play like when i'm browsing is gonna just play the whole loop at the tempo of my session and that's something that fl i don't know if they've updated this yet but when you're going through the browser of fl they'll play you just like a snippet and if your tempo is too high it won't play the whole loop through and that kind of annoys me um when i'm trying to work this way so i use ableton but i use fl also for different things but when i'm working with my samplers i use ableton so let me just go through some of these drum loops and let me see if I find something that that I could put into the sampler. That's dope. But I'm trying to find something that is like more like a standard loop just listen to samples over it that's cool so let me load that into the session again you're not going to be able to see what's going on in the screen because i'm using the, the the doll as like a vinyl player you know what i mean i'm just looking for a drum break so that i could get that going uh it's a two bar drum break and automatically i dragged it into my my session and it's And it's at the BPM that I needed at. So I'm going to go ahead and sample that. Um, input dry right. Enter. Pick sample instrument one. There we go. Um, and one of the things that I'm going to do here too is I'm going to put uh, it in 30K. Just to give it a different sound. It, it basically cuts off some highs on the sample. So let me let me get that into the sampler and I'm going to loop it. Let's get it sample and put dry right. So the right is where my computer's coming out of. All right, here we go. All right, cool. So that's in there, and it's a little bit low, the sample, as you can hear it. Let me see if I have my pedal in here. Okay. That could be, yeah, my pedal's in there. So sometimes when you have the pedal, you got to go into your system settings, edit system. So this is like a, a little bit of a, a jewel. You hear your samples hella low, and that's not because you need to boost it or, or normalize it. You need to go into edit system left not that pedal volume you got to put it on mod so automatically it's a little bit louder right now now i'm gonna go to that sample you can name it you can name it it's very good to do that and another trick up, up and down it takes you to g right away i'm gonna call this drums or break actually because it's a break yeah, so when you hit the top and bottom button together, it goes to the letter G automatically and it lets you navigate faster to write down the names. Then just hit down to create, you know, blanks. There you go. So now we'll see it is the break. All right, cool. I'm going to also go to the pitch window. I'm going to go to the pitch window here. I'm going to take off this LFO thing. It makes it sound like a chorus effect. I don't want that. Then I'm going to go to edit amp, normalize the kick. 
cool. So I cut out the audio when it was normalizing the gain. It's a process that it has to do. So then I'm also, just for the sake of the video, uh, make it louder, edit amp, boost. Cool. So my whole point right here, I know this is a, I know this is a two bar loop because I'm seeing it in Ableton that is two bars and it's already lined up. So I want to get the ASR to loop it perfectly at this 150 BPM. That way now with that loop, I could start listening back to samples and see how they fit with these drums automatically. So this is one of the videos that I was going to make separately, but I'm going to just include it in this video. Um, and it's a, a way to loop perfectly in the in the ASR. So I'm going to go to my edit uh, system page again, where I, where I changed the pedal from bottom to mod. I'm going to make sure, and I already saw it, It was, but I, this is where you find it. I'm going to make sure that my auto loop finding is to on. Sometimes I turn this off and sometimes I turn it on, but you got to know why this is going on. So there's a little bit of a tech talk break. When this is on, this is the dopest thing that the ASR had at the time because they don't have visual chopping, right? Like the MPC 2000 XL, you're chopping by ear and by numbers. But when auto loop finding is on, the ASR could automatically find zero crossing points. And this is going to help you find perfect loops or at least loops without, you know, clicks and pops because you're going to be he hearing, you're going to be hitting, excuse me, zero crossing points. And a zero crossing point, you could look that up, is basically when the wave form, when the sine wave hits um, a zero. So right there, if you cut on the zero, so there's a line, you know, a sine wave is going like this. Any sound wave is going like this. And there's a line going through the middle. Right there, when it hits that zero, boom, you cut right there and you hit a transient, you're not going to click. So I got that going. I'm going to edit my wave sample. Edit wave forward. It's on forward, no loop. So I want to find the ending of that sample. Now, the MPC 2000 Excel, for those of you guys that know, when you're chopping, you could chop after, you know, a transient so that you could hear the end if something's going on. But here I would have to hear, like, it's hard for me to explain that, but here I would have to hear, like, the whole loop going and then see if I hit the end the right way. A way, a little trick around that, which is, is kind of like a gem, is that you could listen to the loop backwards so you could see where your loop ends. That way I could trim it perfectly. So basically I got my loop going like this. I wanna know right when that ending point is. So I'm gonna listen to the loop in backwards mode. Backward no loop. So now my loop is starting from the end and going to the front. And I want to catch it like right when that sound starts, right when, it's, when I hear any sound. You see, it's taking a little bit when I press the, it's taking a little bit for it to start. So I'm going to go to my, my end point and I'm going to start going down on this number right here. Still a little bit of a break. So when you use your ears. So like around 86 and, and another cool trick is if you go lower in the octave You'll be able to hear it If there is any, any gap in the air Like So 86 is going to be like where I start And then Since my zero crossing thing is on And my settings I'm going to go to the loop end And this is going to basically put it Like where there's, a, where there's exactly a zero crossing Let me go down let me see if I go down. I usually try to find like a, a zero point like this. See what happens. This is like trial and error. So this is why it takes a little bit of time to work it on the on the um on the on the ASR. My fault. I had to turn my loop on after that. So let me go back. I'm going to loop forward. My loop end time, I wanted it to be like 75. That's where it was. Like around 86 to 75. I saw that there was like an even number with the zeros at the end. Let me see. 
so then when I have it like this on loop, now I could go to sample end and it's gonna match it to that. It's not gonna let it go past the loop. So let's see if it's looping perfectly there. Like, I'm gonna play it back. Now it's coming in too early, so I'm gonna go back to that 86. Let me go up there. Let's see how that sounds. Yeah, it still has like a little bit of a stutter. So I'm gonna see like, you know, I'm gonna try it a little bit closer and then I'm gonna sequence it to make sure that it's is is fitting the, the 150. Yeah, so right there. Right there sounds good to me. Let me go down. So I already got a perfect loop in the ASR. So it's gonna loop at any t if I, I wanna change the pitch. You wanna do jungle? There you go. Alright, cool. So I'm gonna stick to the original, to the original pitch. But I'm gonna go into my sequencer. I know already that it's a two-bar loop. So I'm going to go edit sequence. My tempo's to 150. It's on loop on. And I'm going to record. Let me go. I like to record on this screen right here. So I'm going to hit record and play. And I'm going to record two bars. Three bars. It says three bars. Usually that's the, the ASR does that. So I'm going to hit enter to S. I'm going to keep the two bars, but then I'm going to go to command sequence and I'm going to change sequence length. And the ASR is like the, these guys were smart when they made it. So it's going to be change sequence length. And right away they ask you, you want to delete one bar at three? All right. Yes. So I can make it two bars. I want to delete one bar at three. Command complete already. All right. So let me go back to my sequence, edit sequence. And let me play it back and see if it's looping perfectly. Another thing you hear that is kind of phasing a little bit. I'm going to go to my edit layer and I'm going to turn my layer glide mode to trigger. And when it's on trigger, if you read the manual, this is kind of like having it in, um, in mono. So it's kind of like a mute group. So it allows it to cut itself off let's let's play it back like this and if it's not looping perfectly still i'm gonna go back and keep editing the length i haven't truncated my sample yet and i'm gonna show you why you would why you would want to do that but basically this this should help with that little phasing that's happening when you hear back the loop perfect Sounds good to me. So now I got my loop going. Now what I could do if you want to keep saving samp if you want to keep saving space is since you got your loop going perfectly, there's a little bit of air at the end um, of my of my loop when I sampled it in. And back this is not more um, as much of a concern now because the way we use these samplers, we end up dumping stuff back in the DAW. But back in the day when you had to be more conservative with your sample memory, you would go into command wave. And you could uh, truncate, truncate wave sample. So it's gonna basically cut off anything after the endpoint that is not being used. Cool. So now my sample is is looping perfectly at 150 BPM. Now I could go back into Ableton and I could monitor and just start hearing back some loops. And th you, this, you're already like 50% of the way through making a beat at this point. All right, cool. So let me let me see what I got here. I got a whole bunch of samples. Like I said, I collected.
the drums are a little loud because I put the amp on, but I could go into the amp, edit amp. I'm going to leave the boost on because it's knocking, right? But I'm going to go into the into the wave sample volume right here. I'm going to just lower it down. This is like the mixer window. Boom. I'm going to lower it down to like 80. Let me see. Cool. That way I can hear the sample over it a little bit better. session with an artist this is kind of what they want to hear they don't want to hear a whole like crazy transitions they want something that they can write to so you want to get something locked in with your own drums and with your own tempo i mean with a good tempo that's locked in with a sample you know they're like oh word i like that they might even come with their own sample that they want you to flip you know So I'm gonna bring that into my session. In Ableton, I'm gonna bring that into my session in Ableton, and basically, it's pretty much like lined up for me. Although I have warp off here on, I want. So the cool thing about Ableton is that you could also like working with a doll, you could start affecting the sample before you bring it, before you um, before you like put it into your ASR, you could filter it, you could add an effect to it, you could change the pitch of it, you know, things like that. So let me see, I got, I got my warp mode to like not warp these longer samples, but I'm gonna try to, cause I kinda wanted to auto warp long samples. I want that on on. I kind of want to like add a little bit of compression and maybe cut off some of the lows in Ableton. And this is something that you would do when you had like a DJ mixer and you you cut off some frequencies so that your beat could fit better. Um, this has an EQ, but I want to do it before I bring in the beat. Before I bring it into the beat, I want to do it in the DAW. So use your tools, you know. Let me see. Damn, I lost that sample where I had it. See if I find it again. Yeah, I think it's right here. Cool. So let me bring that into my session. It's warped. So like in the Lord Finesse one, like if you watch when he gave like, I think he was like in another country, I forgot where. But he basically like preps his samples before, you know, he might probably go into the SP-1200 and do something in there, um, you know, like once he's feeling a groove. So this is a good way to test things. But I like to do it as I'm going. So I already got the drum. I got the drum break already into my ASR, already giving me that flavor when I go out and check out this beat. And now um, if my sample is not lining up, I just try to find the one and then I try to basically make it fit the 150 BPM tempo before it comes into the ASR. That way it makes things just like flow smoothly. And again, some people might call it cheating. I already addressed that in the intro, but this is how you go ahead and make a beat that sounds correct, you know, by industry level standards. Nobody wants shit all over the place, you know. Dilla had a way to make shit swing his own way, but it was still musically like it has certain concepts, you know, like you got to know the rules before you break them. So, you know, stay on beat, stay in key, and you're going to make shit that people like fuck with. They're like, oh, yeah, that sound right. So, yeah, this is a little bit off. I'm, I'm seeing the warp markers on Ableton and I'm going to just I'm not going to warp it like every single beat. I just want the one. So like on the on the on the two. Mm, boom. That's another that's another hit. Cool. See, 
and I, once you fix like a few of the tra- transients, now the whole thing is already flowing like like it should on the on the beat. Watch. When I was talking about gain staging in the ASR, you want this to be hitting a little bit of the red, um, but my mic is sounding a little distorted, so I'm gonna go to edit track, and I'm gonna edit track A. I'm gonna lower my volume here. Check, 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 check. There we go, a little too low. And there we go. So now my vocals are, are still crispy and I could play my sample back. When I hit the drums, it's gonna be on the beat. So I'm gonna sample, I'm gonna sample just the beginning. I'm gonna sample the beginning of that. It's already hitting the way I want it to. So I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit sample, input drive right, pick sample instrument number two. There we go. And I'm gonna hit enter. And then I'm gonna hit play in the Ableton and sample like, I'm gonna sample like four bars, make it a four bar loop. I might do eight. Let me see. Let me see how it sounds. Okay. So I did eight bars. I'm going to play the root key. Cool. And so here you got now you could now you could get creative you got the sample lined up into your asr is hitting at the same bpm as your drum break and now you could get to either chopping it to rearrange it or you could just play it back as a loop um remember though the loop that we have in the sequencer is only two bars so i could show you guys also how to make your you know basically make your loop eight bars because if you want to just play the sample like you could literally like just go like just play the sample back like it's mad low so what's going on here remember when i talked about gain staging we gotta normalize this sample i'm gonna name my sample here you can name it whatever the sample name is in the in the program it's called sagittarius a major this is from a pack that was sent to me by another producer that I guess he he bought this or something. But I'm gonna just name it Sag. That way I I could find it later. And you know what? I might put the the A major. That way I know the key. If I want to add my own bass line later. Cool. Sag A Mage. All right, cool. So now if I wanted to, I could just record just the sample without chopping it. Like basically just have a loop going. Let's say the artist just liked it how it was. They don't want me to rearrange like what order the the chops are coming in i could just you know let me let me see how it sounds of me playing it i'm not going to record it yet i was going to normalize it to my fault i'm all over the place edit amp no command amp normalize gain it's going to take a little bit of a minute my sound my vocals are going to cut out
cool. So here, I could go and do that looping that I did with the break, but it's not necessary because your your tempo is already set to that break. So no matter what, if you make an eight bar loop out of that break, your sample is going to automatically cut off like at eight. You know what I mean? And I'm going to put the layer on trigger and I'm, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. I'm going to go back to the sequence and I'm going to play it. It's going to just be two bars for now, but it's going to let me play my sample over it. I still want it louder, so I'm going to edit amp. I'm going to boost it. Fire. Cool, cool. So I'm going to go back to my sequence. Yeah. See, so it basically keeps playing and then it cuts off at the end. But I only have a two bar drum loop. So I know already that I sampled eight bars out of this loop. So I need to make my drum break. Just copy it over a couple of times. The way you do that is you go to command sequence and we had it on chain sequence length earlier. We're going to go to um, append, append sequence. So the word append means to like put together and you're going to put together the sequence. So if I append two bars to itself, basically, it's going to make four bars. And then if I take four bars and I append four bars together, it's going to make a total of, you guessed it, eight bars. So I'm going to append it twice, right? I'm going to append it from sequence one, which is what we're working with, to sequence one. So one and one, you know, the sequence to itself is two and two. 2 and 2 is 4, so let me just go back to show you guys, edit sequence, it's going to play back 4 bars, but I need 8. So to get to 8, I need to run that command again, append sequence again, sequence 1, which is 4 bars to sequence 1, 4 plus 4 is 8, basic math guys, fire, so now let me go back and it should be eight bars. And we're back to one. So right now, you you basically, you home free already. You home free. Like what I mean by that is that you already got a beat. I could make beats like this all day. And it took me, I don't know, I'm going to check the video, but this shouldn't take you once you know how to move around the ASR, like 15 minutes. I could make beats 15 minutes all day with the artists rapping to this shit. So now I'm going to record my actual eight bar loop over this drum loop that's timed perfectly over eight bars. So let's, let's do that. Got my track two selected, record play. Let's hear back. Some of these loops come with stems too. You could like separate the bass and the... that's it. That's that's a beat. I don't care what you say. If this is this is a beat already, you could make industry beats like this all day. Now, what can you do from here? Create. The options are limitless. I could I could sample a snare, a kick to layer on top of this. I could filter the drum break. I could start adding effects to just the, the sample. I'm going to do some of that now, but this is how you make industry beats all day on your ASR using Ableton as, as your sample source and as a tool of efficiency. So we home free. Let's get, let's get a little creative from here and let's start fucking with the sample. Let's start filtering the drum break. I'm going to filter the drum break so I can add my own kick and snare layer to it. That's what I'm going to do next. So I went into edit. to some of that drum break. Let me use this other filter right here. This one I think is the one that I like. This cuts out the lows. 
another way is you could go to edit track. I could solo. I could solo my drums. I want to cut out some of the lows so I could put my own kick. That should be good. Let me hear it now. Edit track again. Let me hear it. Now I'm gonna go back into Ableton and I'm gonna audition some of my kick samples. And I go with industry shit, man. Shout out Snare Jordan, my boy Jake One, making hits all day. I could go on a on a vinyl run and search for for my own kick. Yeah, let, let, call call it call it whatever you will, call it cheating, but I call it being resourceful and using your tools. You want to get placements or you want to, you know, be the the best uh, loop finder or kick drum finder. All the kicks are already out there. There's nothing new under the sun. Everything's already out there. So I'm going to go through my Snare Jordan Volume 8 that I purchased. I already showed you all the receipts, so don't play with me. through through Ableton first before I even sample I want something like I want something subtle that's not subtle at all that's it crazy sample input dry right pick sample instrument three, three and hit enter I'm gonna go to so one thing I noticed I didn't change the pitch of the sample on the LFO I left it it sounds good sometimes it works sometimes I, I take it off so let me go here I don't like it on my kick a lot of times Command amp, I want to normalize that kick. I usually boost my kicks or everything as y'all see, but be careful with clipping. And then I'm a, I'm gonna record I'm gonna record over that. I'm gonna record over the the drum break. You you might have wanted to do this earlier, but I like to hear the kick and the snare over the sample. So now I'm gonna have to play over the eight. You know I'm gonna have to play over the eight bars which I'm not afraid to do. You could always quantize too, but we're going to play this this kick pattern over the 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 whole sample. That that's cool. Um, that's what I was hearing. Simple is good for rappers and for these type of beats. Um, I could quantize that further. I'm going to see how it sounds with my natural rhythm, if it fits. And I could also audition. That's the cool thing about the ASR. Put the layer on trigger. Go back to my sequence. So 
So I was I was okay on the timing there. I could I could have done better, but I'm gonna see how the 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 quantize sometimes sounds really good on this. I'm gonna try to do a triplet timing edit track quantize track. So it's command not edit command track and then it's gonna be quantize. So I'm gonna hit yes track three. I'm gonna try to quantize it to like one eighth triplets. See how it sounds. It's gonna give me the option to keep it or to like keep the original entire track yes let me see hit play to audition So it sounded good for the most part, but there was that one hit that kind of like sounds a, a bit off. So I'm going to keep the old one. I'm going to record it again. And I like the swing that the one eighth triplets is giving it. So I'm going to try to still quantize it to that, but I'm going to try to play it a little bit better now. keep the new one. I'm gonna try to quantize again and see if, if I was able to fix that and get that swing that I that I heard yeah so that that has a little bit of a swing and it still is you know more tight on the grid and it has that little like kind of like drag that i wanted to get out of it so let me play that back dope dope all right now i'm gonna look for a snare just to like like I said, we was like 90% done. If you want to leave it, some people don't even like drums on their samples. You could have just left it like that, filter it, go through the effects, go crazy. But I'm showing you guys basically, yo, like how, how this is how this is done. <laughs> that snare sounds dope. Let me hear how it sounds over the beat. Snare Jordan, Bali Mate. Yo, I'm like, there's no promo, but this, this is, th these work. Yo, Jake One, if you, if you see this, bro, like, come on, man. Send me some more Snare Jordans. I'm, I'm, I'm probably putting up the sales after you, after people see what, what I'm doing with this. Alright, cool. Got my snare. I didn't label my kick though. Let me label that now. I get you get quick on this. Stay organized, my friends. That's it. I'm not as quick as as Jake one, but I'm I'm trying to get there. You you feel me? Use it every day. All right, cool. Let me take off that LFO. Command amp. Let me normalize it. And then I'm going to edit amp boost snare. Dope. Sequence. I'm going to play it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it over. The, I'm going to record it over the sequence, my snare. Can change the pitch if I want. I'm going to just stick to the OG. Let me 
can see how it's sounding without any quantize. Sometimes I leave them loose like that, but for the sake of this video, I, I want things to sound a little tighter because my other videos have been more experimental, but let me quantize that. I'm going to try to do it to one eighth instead of the triplets. Track four, quantize to one eighth. Let me see. I like that. I like the quantize better. So now, now you could go into like changing the volume of the kick with the snare, filter it if you want, um, just balance it out according to how you hear the beat. But we already got a kick and a snare layered over. Let me just kick, sn kick, snare layered over a drum break, playing over uh, a loop. So that's four elements. If, again, I keep reference Jake one because he uses the ASR. He makes beats that are in this realm. Um, you're gonna use like he gonna use like five to six elements. Some of his dopest beats, he says. Cause guess what? Look, you got eight tracks on the on the ASR. And back in the day, the Beatles, everybody using four tracks, eight tracks. You can't get something popping or a vibe going with eight tracks. There's no need for you to use twelve omni spheres and. Now nah, you just there's the basic of getting a vibe going for somebody to rap on and using that kind of spirit of all right, we're using a break, you know, hip hop, we're using a dope soul sample, we're getting a nice kick and a snare to make a unique our own. This is this is it. I'm gonna lower the snare a little bit. after recording for a little bit longer that uh, my video got cut off short uh, I ran out of memory on my iPhone and that's what I use to record these videos but I think I got uh, into it enough to show you guys what I wanted to show you guys uh, as I keep upgrading the channel uh, as money comes in obviously I'm gonna get more cameras and I'm gonna be able to do more of these um, I'm even thinking of incorporating a live stream I just don't have enough inputs right now to, to get it going the way that I want to. But like I said, I could keep cooking like this up all day. It's so much fun for me. Hopefully I got to see how easy it is to do stuff with Ableton in conjunction with the ASR. And um, the beat is playing right under. I'm still going through the ASR with the mic. And I ended up adding a bass. Um, I sampled Ample Sounds P Light Bass, which is a free plugin into the ASR and um, I played over the bass line that the, that the sample had so that's about it man hopefully you guys learned something from that uh, keep rocking with me as your boy free play I know the video is hella long but hey man it's unedited and you guys get to see you know the process and how I think about uh, these things alright thank y'all for rocking with me I'm tired as hell uh, it's your boy free play y'all already know peace